Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printing here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to cut down on duplicate code in your templates when dealing with Flask WTF. But before I get into that, I just wanna let you know that prettyprinted.com now has courses. So if you're interested in learning things in more detail than you could from a single YouTube video, check out prettyprinted.com. I'll be adding courses there all the time. I have a link in the description below if you didn't get that. So now onto the code. Let's take a look at this form. I have two fields, one for the username and one for the password. As we can see, the code is pretty much the same. So you get the label, you get the username, and then you loop over the errors and you display the errors. And then for the password, it's the same thing. So really the only difference between these two are the name, uh, password and username. But if you had 10 fields, you'd probably see how that would be a lot of code duplication. So to get around that, what I'll do is I'll create a macro to handle most of this code. So what I mean by macro, it's, it's kind of like a function in Jinja. So you can create this macro or a function and call it inside of your template. So to do this, I'll create a new file and I'll call it, let's say, underscore form. Now, how about this? underscore render field because I'll call the macro render field as well. So it's an HTML file and then inside of it, I won't have typical HTML. I'll only have a little snippet. So to start, I'll create a macro block. So macro and then render field is what I want to call it. And then it's going to take in a field, not render fielder, render field. If I can spell. Okay, there we go. And then, of course, I'll have the closing brackets as well. So in macro down here, typical of Jinja. So inside of the, these brackets, I'll write the code for the macro. So this is where the HTML comes in. So basically, when this macro gets called, it's going to replace everything uh, where it gets called with what's inside of this block. So let's take a look how I did the, the form. So the first thing I see is I see a, a label. So if I want to display the label in the macro, then I'll do something like this. But I don't exactly need it to be like that because form not username is the field itself. So what I'll do instead is I'll pass in form not username to render field and then I'll call field inside of the macro. So I'll change this to field. And likewise for a uh, username, instead of rendering anything specific, I'll just render the field itself. And in this case, the field can actually take arguments. So I'll cover that case. So to cover the case of arbitrary arg arguments being passed into the macro, you just use KWR, KWARGS. And then one thing you can do is you can exclude this from automatic escaping. So in Jinja, it will automatically escape any values that you put in here for safety reasons. But if this is something that you wrote yourself, then you don't necessarily need to escape it. So to do that, you use the pipe and then the word safe. And that will exclude it from any automatic escaping. So now the next thing that I want to do is I have this loop. And this loop is going to be inside of a unordered list. So I'll put that here. And then I have the loop. So let me write the for statement. So for error in, and it's going to be field.errors because this is form.username.errors. So it's going to be field.errors. And then I want to loop over it and then I'll end the for loop here. So in four. Okay, so what am I doing inside of the loop? I simply have one list item and I'm coloring it red. So I'll put that inside here. So now every time it loops over, it will generate a red list item with the error. And if it runs out of errors, then of course you won't see anything. And that's it. So I'll save this and then to use it, I simply have to import it inside of my form template. So at the top of the file here, I'll go 
from, and then I was passing the name of the, the HTML file, the, the template with the macro on it. So underscore render field dot HTML. And then I'm going to import render field. So as you can see, this is very similar to how Python does it. It's just importing from an HTML file instead of a Python module. And then finally, I can get rid of everything here and replace it with the render field function or macro that I created. So I'll call render field and I'll pass in form.username and then I can get rid of everything above it. Not the token, but the username stuff. So I'll save that and if I refresh my form, I see everything is still fine. And then if I do the same thing for password, so I just get rid of this and pass in render field form dot password then I should still have the password and I do and it kind of cleaned up the code a little bit just because of the nature of the the render field so the submit button moved and that was probably because I didn't close out the tag properly so now if I type in something Anthony and then secret and submit we see that the password works and the username is there. So that's all I want to show you. As you can see here, if you have multiple fields, uh, it's a lot cleaner than having all that code to handle all the errors and to handle the case of having the label and the actual input. So of course you can customize this any way you want, customize it to fit your application so it would be different. This is pretty basic, but just realize that you could put as much HTML around these values as you want and it will just repeat every time you call this macro. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment down below and I will get to it. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And like I said, if you're interested in getting more detail in your flask tutorials then go to prettyprinted.com to check out the courses so thank you for watching this video and i will talk to you next time